What's going on guys? Thanks for clicking on this video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the video settings that I personally use on the Canon EOS R. Also the settings that I think are the best for this camera. First of all, if you clicked on this video, I appreciate you for stopping by, and I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider subscribing to the channel for more content. If you have a Canon EOS R and you're looking for some photo settings as well, I released a video right here that goes into the settings I use on a day-to-day -day for photo. Now that all that's out of the way, let's hop back to the camera and look at the video settings I use on the Canon EOS R. All right, guys, so here we are on the EOS R, and what I'm gonna do is just work down this left side and then over here to the right side, and then I'll hop into the menu button and go through some extra settings that aren't shown on this screen here. First things first, if you wanna see more information like the histogram, you're just gonna cycle through the info button. Every time you push it, it brings up a little bit more information, different screens, and I like to have the histogram showing. Now that that's showing, we'll start on the top left. Autofocus, this is gonna depend on the shot. For video, if there's someone in the video, a face, I will have face tracking just to make sure that they're always in focus. One point autofocus is usually on when face tracking is off. The only other settings that I'll use aside from face tracking and one point autofocus is I'll use these zones, the large vertical and large horizontal. If I'm using a gimbal and I know that I want something to stay in like the right side of the screen or the bottom side of the screen, that's where I'll take advantage of these because you can put a zone in and say I want it to stay in the bottom third or the bottom half of the screen. Then I'll do that zone and move it down to the bottom or up to the top or if I want to use a vertical one, whatever side I want to stay in focus or whatever area of the frame that I want to stay in focus. So that zone autofocus actually comes, oops, that zone autofocus actually comes in handy quite a bit, but for the most part, I'm in face tracking or one point just so I can be sure that the focus is exactly where I want it to be. Next down is the recording size, and this is going to depend on what I'm going for. If someone's in the frame talking or moving, uh, and I want it to look natural, I will use 24 frames per second or 23.98. Uh, especially when people are talking, I use that because it's gonna be come across natural. It's not gonna slow it down at all in post. If I know the shot is going to be slowed down in post, I will definitely use 60 frames per second, which is actually right next to it. Uh, and I usually always shoot in 1080p. I don't do 4K unless it's super intentional. And that's for two reasons. The first reason is that I like to keep my file sizes small. Um, and the second reason is I, I don't really have a use for 4K at this moment. Um, a lot of the videos I do are longer format. So being able to save file size kind of takes precedent on the quality of the video. And a lot of my output settings are 1080p anyways. So uh, I could downscale, but I just shoot right at 1080p for the most part. So I bounce between these two 98% of the time. Uh, that's 1080p 24 frames and 1080p 60. If I'm not shooting talking or someone that I want to look natural motion, uh, then I'm always in 60 because I always want to have the option to slow things down in post. And in case you don't know, slowing down 60 frames per second is a much better option than trying to slow down 24 frames per second. If your footage is getting choppy when you slow it down, it's likely because you're shooting in 24 frames. Bump the frame rate up to 60 frames per second and slow your footage down that way. I think you'll have a much better time. Frame rate itself is for a different video though, so we'll save that for another day. Uh, so yeah, for something like this, when I'm doing a YouTube video, I'm almost always in 24. Audio recording, this is kind of good to touch on. I like for my balances, so my microphone's not actually attached to this camera, so the levels aren't going to show what I'm saying, but I like for my levels to stay right at about 12. Uh, if it goes up to the middle of the yellow, I'm okay with it, but I like for them to hit 12. Uh, a little under 12 is all right, but I like to stay away from zero as much as I can while still being safe. Volume, uh, if you have headphones in or you wanna hear something back, you can adjust your volume. And then down below that, digital uh, internal stabilization. I keep this off as much as I can because with the EOS R, you'll notice there's a slight crop when you turn on the internal stabilization. And if you want it to be even more stable, uh, it gets even more cropped. In some circumstances, when I'm shooting handheld, I might turn enabled on just to be sure that uh, it is a stable footage. But for the most part, I keep this off so that I get as much real estate as possible with this camera. Next over, we're going to white balance, auto white balance. I like to keep mine, this is on auto right now, but I like to keep mine on cloudy for the most part. 
Uh, it's it's just kind of a preference for me. Depending on what kind of environment you're in, you can change this to get the most natural look on your camera. But for me, I just find cloudy for the most part stays within a pretty good range no matter where I'm at, unless I'm in like a fluorescent light situation. But cloudy is what mine stays on for the most part. I don't really ever go away from cloudy. Auto lighting optimizer and HDR movie shooting, I both they're both disabled right now, but I also never use them, so those are never on. And then I also, you're always shooting your shutter speed, which is double your frame rate. So if you're at 24 frames per second, you want 1 50th. If you're at 60 frames per second, you're gonna want it to be uh, one over 125 or 120 if you have it. Uh, F-stop, I keep that usually as low as I can. I don't really ever bump that up for video. And then ISO, I have it at 400. I try not to deviate too far between one and eight. Um, if I need to go above eight, I'll usually try to get extra lighting. I don't ever really wanna go above 800. And I usually stay around 400 if I can. If that's not enough, I try to adjust it with uh, either artificial lighting or opening a window or whatever. Next, we'll hop into the menu bar and we'll look at some of the settings here. So we already went over the frame rate that I'm using, movie cropping, disabled, sound recording we went over, time code. I didn't adjust any of these. I left them as the default. And the movie digital internal stabilization, we went over that as well. Lens aberration correction and the remote control, both. I didn't change anything here. And the remote control, I don't have one. Um, I didn't change anything here. A lot of them, as you can see, are disabled. The photo settings, white balance, nothing changed here. Canon log, however, I do shoot in Canon log. Uh, if you don't shoot in Canon log and you do actually post-process your videos, like you color grade, I would suggest switching this feature on. Uh, go on to 8-bit. 10-bit is not going to be supported, so that's not even an option. But if you're able to record to an external monitor, that's where that comes in handy, but 8-bit is what you'll want for Canon EOS R. View Assist, I turn it on. What this does is if, the, if it's off, you'll notice that the screen is a lot more grayscale. There's a lot less colors being presented. That's actually what you're going to see when you're editing this footage. However, I, I like to have it on just because I like to get a little bit of an idea of what my colors are gonna look like uh, and what the footage is going to look like at the end of the day. So. Canon log on, view assist, preference, if I personally like to have it on. The color matrix, I have EOS R original, it's actually pretty good. You could do neutral, but I mean, it's, you're just gonna have to do a little bit more in post. I use cinema, it's fine for me. Characteristics, I bring strength uh, up to two for the sharpness. That's really all I do, and that's again, just preference. Um, you can keep it at zero. You're not going to notice it a whole lot, but I like that. So Canon Log, I definitely recommend you shooting in that unless you know you're not going to be doing any post-production and color grading. Then you can, if you're just if you're just using this camera to record simple videos with really minimalistic editing, then keep it off. But if you're going to be color grading, I highly recommend to use the Canon Log feature in this camera. I will note that you're going to want to get the C-Log LUT that Canon has come out with so that when you bring it into post, you can then correct the footage with their LUT that they made. I'll link that down in the description below uh, so that you can go download that LUT and have it. It's free, it doesn't cost anything, uh, but it will help your editing out a lot when you're going into log for the first time. The next two options, I don't really touch with HDMI display. If I'm ever shooting with you know a monitor or with my computer, I'll have that on, but for the most part, you don't need that for just basic shooting. I do wanna skip ahead to one important feature, and that feature is this sensor bar right here, when you cover it, it switches to the viewfinder. Your gimbal might end up moving and blocking that sensor, and then you can no longer see what's on the screen or what you're recording. So to turn that off, you're gonna to wanna to go to the wrench icon and go to the fourth uh, tab, go down to display settings, display control, it's gonna be set to auto, turn it to manual, and then you can control if you want your screen to be your main source or your viewfinder. Now you can see the viewfinder is where everything's at. But uh, let's actually change that back. There we go, screen. Now when you're shooting and the gimbal or anything covers that, your screen's not going anywhere. You can still see everything that's going on. So I like having that because a lot of the times when I'm shooting with a gimbal, it would block that and I just wanna avoid that at all costs. Other than those settings, the only thing I would recommend, if you know you're gonna be shooting different styles a lot, you can set up these custom modes to be exactly what you want. So custom mode one, for example, for me, is this typical setting where I'm F4, F400, 150th. This is what I shoot a lot of my videos in. 
and I can just easily access it by going to C1N. Now I can set these other ones up on my work camera. I have these set up as 60, a 60 frame per second option. So if I want to bounce back and forth between 60 frames, I can just do that right there. And I don't have to worry about any other settings. They're already set to the right shutter speed for the frame rate, the right aperture, the right ISO, and I'm ready to go. It makes switching between the two a lot quicker if you know you're going to be using one setting a lot more than the other. All right guys, so that's the settings that I use when doing video work with the Canon EOS R on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have questions about anything that I went over or want me to go a little bit further into depth on something that I touched on, please let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to try to further elaborate or help you out with any questions that you have. As I said earlier, I also have a video on the photo settings for this camera, so if you haven't done so already, go ahead and check that one out right up there as well. All right, guys, that's all I have for this one. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I don't really care. It's engagement either way. Drop a comment if you have any questions, and if you would, please subscribe to the channel if you liked this video for more content like this. Whew. I'll see you next time.